Hey boys and girls, I'm your English teacher Sophie and in this video I'll discuss a new type or kind of expository writing and in specific the steps of writing a well-organized compare and contrast paragraph. So all you have to do is to open your eyes and ears very well and you have to concentrate with me in order to write your own paragraphs successfully. So let's do this. But first of all, let's read the objectives and activities. Build students' understanding of the terms compare and contrast. Identify similarities and differences among subject matter and cite clue words or signal words. Get introduced to a new kind of expository writing. Identify compare and contrast paragraphs. Demonstrate the understanding of the compare and contrast strategy by representing information in a Venn diagram. Use the information filled in the Venn diagram to write a compare and contrast paragraph by following the steps of writing. And finally, fill in a checklist. To know more about comparing and contrasting, let's watch the following video. Hi friends, today we're going to talk about comparing and contrasting. Our learning goal for today says, I can compare and contrast two things. Now, when you compare and contrast things, you're talking about the ways that they're the same and the ways that they're different. You know that I like to be organized, so when I'm comparing the way things are the same or different, I'm going to use a tool to help me keep organized. That tool is called a Venn diagram. Let's go ahead and say it together. Venn diagram. Now, I like the Venn diagrams for lots of reasons, but obviously because it gives you organized, and then also because it begins with a V. Now, there aren't a lot of fun V words I work with every day. Now, as you'll notice, there's two circles, one here and another one on the other side. <clears throat> In the middle is where they kind of overlap or where they mix together. I'm going to show you what we're going to put into these different parts of the Venn diagram to help keep us organized when we're comparing and contrasting or finding out the way things are the same or different. So I called in some friends to help us. Here's our friend, Sunny. Say hey, Sunny. Hey, Sunny. All right, let's go ahead and describe Sunny. Now, say I read an article about Sunny, or I read like a little paragraph, or if I just observed her by looking at her, I would notice that she is yellow. She has blue wings. She has orange feet. Do you agree? Oh, good. Now, we're going to compare and contrast two things. So, I brought in Sunny's sister, Lima. Hey, Lima. All right, let's go ahead and observe Lima. She is what color, friends? Yeah, she's green. And she has oh, pretty pink wings and super cute pink feet. All right, so now I just found out how they're different because Sunny's yellow and Lima, of course, is green. Sunny has blue wings, but Lima has pink wings. And Sunny has orange feet, while Lima has pink feet. Now, this kind of looks similar to my Venn diagram, but it's going to change in a minute to get a little bit closer. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those circles and I'm going to move them closer so they overlap a little bit. There we go. Uh, let me reorganize so my words a little bit smaller. Perfect. Okay, so now, at this side, over by Sunny, I have her information. And on this side, over by Lima, I have her information. In the middle, I'm going to write the ways that they're the same. So all of my same words are going to go right in the spot where they mix together. And you see here, Sunny's purple. Oop. And here is Lima's pink. Where the pink and the purple um, cross one another, that's where they're the same. So let's see, they're both birds. So that's one way they're the same. Uh, oh yeah, they both have dots. You see the dots on Sunny's wings and the dots on Lima's wings. Yeah, they're different sizes, hey, but they're still dots. And finally, yeah, they both have beaks. Okay, they're different colors. They still have them. They both have beaks. So those are three ways that they're the same. Now, I've used my Venn diagram to quickly organize the information. Now, over on this side, it's going to be the way that Sunny is different than Lima over on this side. And then in the middle, it's how they're the same. Now, when you use a Venn diagram to compare and contrast, you want to make sure that one side describes one item 
and the other side to describe the other. In the middle is how they're the same. Uh -huh. So what do I mean by comparing and contrasting? Comparing means showing the similarities or common points between two or more people, animals, things, places, or ideas. So I'm showing the similarities, the common points or the similar points. This is what I'm comparing, okay? So what about contrasting? What does it mean? Contrasting means showing the differences or different points between two or more people, animals, things, places, or ideas. So contrasting means showing the differences or different points and comparing means showing the similarities or common points. But wait, how can I organize the similarities and differences? What can I use? Mm, I believe that she mentioned something regarding this in the video and she said that she likes to use a tool. That tool is called Venn Diagram. Okay, so in here, okay, um, you are going to write facts, information, or descriptions about the first item or topic if you want. And in here, you are going to write facts, information, and descriptions about other topic or item. Okay, so these are not the same. So what do we call them? Differences or similarities? You call them differences. Great. These facts and descriptions that are here are only for topic A, for example. And these facts and descriptions that are here are only for topic B. That's why they are considered differences. What about the middle area in here? in the middle area where the what, the circles overlap. What do I have to write? I have to write the similar points or the similarities. Okay, see? And what do we call this? Venn diagram. Let's compare and contrast the sea turtle and the tortoise. Um, in here, we're gonna put facts and information about the sea turtle. And in here, we're gonna put facts and information about the tortoise. And in the middle here area, we are going to write the similarities. Let's start with the sea turtle. It lives mostly in water. It eats jellyfish and it has flippers. What about the tortoise? It lives on land, not in water. It eats grass. Mm, it doesn't eat jellyfish. And it has flat feet, as you can see. These are the differences. Now, what about the similarities, the common points? Both of them are reptiles. They have shells, as you can see here and in here. And finally, they lay eggs. See, here I mentioned facts and information about the sea turtle only. And in here, I mentioned facts and information about the tortoise only. So these are the differences, okay? The different points. And in the middle area, I mentioned the similarities or the similar points, common points that they both have in common, okay? It's time, guys, to get introduced to a new type of expository writing, which is what? writing a compare and contrast paragraph. Wow, let's do this. But first you need to watch the following video to know more about compare and contrast paragraphs. This lesson is going to review how to write a comparison and contrast paragraph. So first of all, what is it? Well, if we're comparing, we're looking at similarities between things, so how things are the same. And if we're contrasting, we're looking at the differences between things. So a comparison and contrast paragraph is going to explain how two people, places, or things are both alike and different. 
And it's really important when you do this type of writing that you make sure that you include how they're alike and how they're different. You can't just do one or the other. You need to cover both when you're comparing and contrasting. So the process that you're going to follow to write one of these paragraphs. First of all, you need to choose two related subjects. Don't choose two subjects that are completely unrelated because if you do that, it's going to be really hard to compare them going to be really hard to find similarities. similarities. So choose two related subjects that you know that you can find some similarities and some differences. Then plan creating a Venn diagram. And we're going to take a look at a Venn diagram in a moment. Then you're going to include your topic sentence. In your topic sentence, make sure that you include both topics that your paragraph is going to cover. So you want your reader to know exactly what it is you're going to compare and contrast. Follow your topic sentence with your supporting details. So all of those ways they're the same and all of those ways that they're different. And make sure that you group those details together in some way that makes sense. So for instance, maybe you want to start your paragraph with how your two subjects are the same, and then you want to say how they're different or maybe you want to say how they're different first and then how they're the same. But make sure that you group them together. Don't jump around all over the place because your reader will have a hard time following your writing. Yeah, he'll get confused. It also helps your reader if you include clue words. So think phrases like on the one hand or on the other hand, that shows differences. A word like both shows the similarities between the two. So think about clue words that you can use when you write that will give your reader a good idea of whether you're showing a similarity, whether you're comparing, or whether you're showing a difference, whether you're contrasting. As I said, when you plan, you want to plan using a Venn diagram. Just in case you don't remember, the Venn diagram, as you can see from this slide, it is the two circles that overlap. On the left-hand circle, topic A, in that blue area, you would list all of the things about topic A that are distinct to topic A, so that topic B doesn't have. And in the purple circle, all the way on the right-hand side, you would list all of the things that topic B has that topic A doesn't. So the outsides of the circles are for differences. Then, in that middle area, that place where the two circles overlap, that's where you put the things that topic A and topic B have in common or their similarities. This graphic organizer, make sure that you complete it before you write your paragraph because it will help you to make sure that your thoughts are organized. Wow, that's a very good video actually. Now, what is a compare and contrast paragraph? A compare and contrast paragraph shows the similarities and differences between two or more people, animals, things, places, or ideas. In other words, it explains how two or more subjects are similar, the same, and different. Okay, do you agree? Yes. Hmm, <laughs> that's so cute. Now, what are the stages of writing a compare and contrast paragraph? One, pre-writing stage. To organize your thoughts, ideas, and information, you have to go through the pre-writing stage in which you have to fill in a Venn diagram. As we said, in here and in here, I'm gonna put the different points or the differences, and in the middle area, I'm gonna mention the similarities or the similar points. But first, from where should I get the needed information to fill in the Venn diagram? Mm -mm. From books, internet, videos, or your acquired knowledge, the things that you already know. Now, two, through writing. During this stage, you have to write an attractive title and capitalize the important words in it. You all know that we have to write an attractive title, okay, for our paragraphs. And we have to capitalize the important words in it. Great, let's continue. Provide your paragraph with a catchy topic sentence. This is going to be the first sentence. 
okay? In which it states clearly that the details are going to handle the similarities and differences, the similar points and the different ones between two people, animals, things, places, or ideas, okay? After that, I need to write the similarities and differences that have been filled in the Venn diagram as supporting details. Let me tell you something about it. As for me, I prefer to start with the similarities and mention all of them and then write all the differences, okay? You also have to use the suitable signal words while comparing and contrasting. I'm gonna tell you more about them in a bit, okay? And finally, you need to close your paragraph with a suitable or the appropriate concluding sentence, or we call it a clincher. Why? To sum up what you've stated above. Mm -hmm. Before we continue, uh, let's have a look at the compare and contrast signal words or clue words that you can use in your paragraphs. When I want to show similarities or when I want to compare, I can use same, the same as, similar, similarly, also, two with double O, as well as, likewise, like, and both. When I want to show the differences, I can use but, however, while, on the other hand, different, difference, differently, unlike, although, and even though. Okay, please guys, do me a favor make sure to use these signal words or clue words. It's a must. You have to use some of them to show the similarities and to show the differences. Please, okay? Use them in your paragraphs. Three, post-writing. This stage is really important for it allows you to review your work and fix your flaws and mistakes before publishing your final work. And during this stage, you have to fill in the following checklist. Let's read together. You have to make sure that you what? Wrote a suitable, catchy title and capitalized all the important words? If yes, you just tick it, check. Okay. I wrote an impressive topic sentence straightforward to the topic. Once I read it, I have to know that I'm going to compare uh, these two people, uh, places, things, uh, animals, okay? And I'm going to talk in specific about the similarities and the differences between them. Once I read the topic sentence, I need to know this, okay? I provided my topic sentence with supporting details. These supporting details are going to be the what? The similarities and the differences. The similar points and the different ones. I use the suitable signal words or appropriate clue words. I use the correct punctuation marks, whether uh, a period, um, an exclamation mark, or a question mark, depending on the type or kind of sentence. I didn't misspell any word. It means that I wrote all the words correctly. And finally, I ended up my whole paragraph with the appropriate or suitable concluding sentence or clincher. Let's continue. Four, publishing. After proofreading your paragraph, fixing the mistakes, and filling in the checklist, it's time to write your paragraph neatly with a legible handwriting and zero mistakes. Look at this girl. She's writing hair paragraph neatly with a legible handwriting and without mistakes. Great, we're done. Beautiful people, are you ready to write a compare and contrast paragraph? Yay, let's do this. Oh, what do I have here? Okay, I have two characters, an old man, and he's called Mr. Smith, and a little cute girl, and her name is Angela. Let's read, Mr. Smith, and Angela are two neighbors that have some common points, I mean similarities, and different ones, I mean differences. Let's see. 
The following Venn diagram represents the similarities and differences between Angela and Mr. Smith. Read the information carefully to know more about them. I will provide you with the information, okay? Facts and descriptions about Angela and Mr. Smith. So, in here and in here, I'm going to write the what the difference is, yeah? And in the middle area, I'm going to write about the common points or similarities. Yay. So here I can see the girls. I'm going to write facts and descriptions about Angela. And in here, I'm going to write facts and descriptions about Mr. Smith. We're going to, we're going to start with the girl. Okay, Angela. She's a little girl. Yeah. She has long brown hair, as you can see. And she lives with her family. Uh, did you notice that I mentioned them as points? I didn't write complete sentences, okay? Make sure to write them in the Venn diagram as points, okay? Great, let's continue. Now, what about Mr. Smith? Let's see, he's an old man. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's obvious, uh, very clear. He's bald, hairless, he doesn't have hair, <laughs> as you can see here, and he lives with his daughter. Okay, these are the different points, the differences between Angela and Mr. Smith. Now, what about the common points? You're going to mention them over here in the middle area. Both of them are humans. They are kind hearted and they like playing chess. And finally, they respect people. These are the similarities or the common points between both of them, okay? Now, guys, you need to use the information found in the Venn diagram to write a well-organized compare and contrast paragraph about Angela and Mr. Smith in not more than eight to ten sentences. Don't forget to write a title and capitalize the important words in it. Yeah. Write a suitable topic sentence straightforward to the topic. Mention the similarities or the similar points, common points, and differences or different points as supporting details. Use signal words or clues and write an appropriate or suitable concluding sentence. Let's start with the title. Little Angela and her old neighbor. Hmm. From the title, I noticed that the paragraph is going to talk about a little girl, and her name is Angela, and her old neighbor. Hmm? Right? Yeah. Aha! Uh -huh. That's the paragraph. Um, as you can see, guys, I use different colors to write my paragraph. Um, you are going to find out why in a bit. Okay? I did that for a reason. We'll see. So in here I have little Angela and her old neighbor. This is considered the what? It's the title. Great. Yeah. Let's start. Ooh, Miss Sophie left a space here. Yeah, don't forget to leave a space. Great. And I have to start the capital letter. Let's read. The two neighbors, Angela and Mr. Smith, have a lot of similar points and many different ones. This is the first sentence. I mentioned in this sentence that I'm going to be talking about Angela and Mr. Smith. And in specific, I'm going to talk about the similar points or similarities and about the differences or different points. So this is the what? The topic sentence. Awesome, let's continue. Now we are going to mention all the similarities. Hmm? Let's read. Both are humans and kind-hearted people. Mr. Smith likes playing chess, similar to Angela, who loves playing chess too. One other thing that they have in common is that they respect people. Now I'm John. I finished all the similarities or the common points between them. Great. Let's move to the differences. Although they have a lot of similarities, they also have several different points. 
So from this sentence, I know that I'm gonna what? Start mentioning the differences. I will begin with the differences. Let's start. To begin with, Angela is a little girl and Mr. Smith is an old man. That's right. The girl has long brown hair, but Mr. Smith is a bold man. <laughs> Angela lives with her family while the old man lives with his daughter. These are the what, the differences, or the different points. I still have the last sentence. Let's read. In brief, these are the similarities and differences between Angela and her lovely old neighbor. And this sentence is the concluding sentence. So I have to start by writing a title. Then I will start it. Uh, then I will start my paragraph by writing a topic sentence. After that, I'm going to mention similarities, then the differences between both of them, and finally, I will write my concluding sentence or clincher. Okay? And let's read the words written in purple here. Both similar to, although, but, and while. These are considered what? These are signal words. Remember? Yeah. So when I'm using both similar and two, I'm showing similarities, the common points. When I use although, but, while, I'm showing differences, right? I'm showing the different points. I'm contrasting. Great. You still have one more thing to do. Let's try to pick some adjectives from the paragraph that we wrote. Okay? I explained and said, that I explained and, and said that an adjective is a word that describes a noun and it usually comes before the noun it describes, right? I will repeat. An adjective is a word that describes a noun and it usually comes before the noun it describes. Let's start. Let's read. Little girl. Okay. Literal is a what? It is an adjective because this word is describing the noun, which is what? Girl. So, girl is a noun. Let's continue. Old man. Old is an adjective. Why? Because it describes a noun, and the noun here is the word man. See? I'm picking them from the paragraph, from the compare and contrast paragraph. Brown hair. What's the color of the hair? Brown. Brown is an adjective. And hair, this word is a noun. The last one, bold man. Bold is an adjective and man, or the word man, is a noun. See? Thank you for watching. I love you.